Hi, it's Linda with No Frills ASMR. So I found this in my parents' coat closet. And I remember it from when I was a kid. We used to play with it all the time. And I thought that over the years it had gotten damaged and maybe disappeared. But I found it. <laughs> so I have this box. I have this old thermometer. So can you guess what we're going to talk about? <laughs> probably because it's probably in the description of the video. Now that I think about it, I probably spoiled it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pull this out. This is a very, very old hat. <laughs> and I don't know if I'll be able to show it. Let me move this box out of the way so I can show it to you. Maybe. Let's see how it's flat. It's kind of dirty. It's it's old. Um, and it says Simpsons. It says Woodrow Piccadilly, London. Simpsons, Toronto, Montreal, made in England. And what you do is you push it there and it pops up into a top hat. So this top hat got me thinking about the Mad Hatter and it's not really a great example of the kind of hat that I'm going to talk about today, but it is kind of like the Mad Hatter hat and it's kind of funny. So, <laughs> but what's cool, look, it just, this is how they'd store them. You just push them flat and then they're flat and you can store it and carry it with you and then you can pop it up. So anyway, I uh, took some notes for myself, <laughs> but I was going to talk about the Mad Hatter. And a lot of you may know the Mad Hatter from the Lewis Carroll book that he wrote in 1865 called... Well, you know, I was going to say Alice in Wonderland, but I think um, it was actually called, uh, I think it was actually called Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I think that was really the original title. And I actually thought that there was a copy around here and I could show you it to you, but I couldn't find it. I thought I had it when I was a kid. <coughs> but anyway, so Alice's Adventures in Wonderland had a character called the Mad Hatter. And a lot of you probably know that because there have been newer movies made with Johnny Depp, I think, playing the Mad Hatter. I never saw that. <laughs> I don't really know much about it. And that was by Lewis Carroll in 1865. But in reality, back in the um, 18th and 19th century, which precedes 1865 because the 18th century, as you may know if you watched my What Century Is It <laughs> video, is 1700, 1701. 1700 to 1799 and the 19th century is 1800 to 1899 so in the 18th and 19th century they were using the word the words mad as a hatter and so Lewis Carroll would have heard this before so he called the mad hatter the mad hatter after people who were known as being mad as a hatter and if you were mad as a hatter you might be acting in unpredictable ways, slurred speech. You might have shakes, hallucinations. Your teeth might start falling out. <laughs> it's not good. And people thought maybe these men, I think they were men, um, 
were drunk or um, they would just act very unpredictably sometimes. And after a while, even as early as 1860, they started to note it in medical literature that men who worked in the hat making industry were starting to act in these ways and they became and that's why it became known as mad as a hatter because so many hatters or they're called milliners <coughs> actually I have that all done so a lot of milliners which are hat makers started to act very unpredictable so they said hey what is going on with all the hatters? <laughs> and it was kind of interesting because in hat making, early on they were using camel fur and to make the camel fur soft enough to be able to work with it, they would soak the camel's fur in camel urine and that would help to make it more malleable. Well, in France, they didn't really have access to camel fur. So they started using rabbit and mink and other less expensive and easier to come by animals. But they still wanted to make it become actually more like clumped together like camel fur would have been and a little bit um, more solid to work with. So they started to use their own urine to urinate on the fur. And after a while they realized, oh look, I wrote down the word urine to remind myself. So the milliners in France started urinating on their like rabbit and all the other fur. And this one guy's would just turn out so much better than everybody else's. And so they were like, hey, Joe, he's probably like, um, Jose, I don't know what's French, uh, Francois. They're probably like, <laughs> why can't I think of a French name? Anyway, uh, they were like, hey, why is your fur turning out better? And it turned out that this one Milner had syphilis, I believe, and the medication they gave him had a mercury compound in it and so his urine had like a type of not actually a type of mercury in his urine and so all the other milliners were like yo we need to drink some ur uh, mercury <laughs> so that our urine's better but pretty quickly they realized they could just take the mercury and put it on the fur and it would kind of make it um you know, easier to work with. The only thing was that the fur would turn bright orange afterwards. And so they called it carotene. If they used the mercury on the fur, it turned orange. And so they called that carotene. But then I think they'd kind of brush all the actual fur off and it would leave it with just the felt. So that is how they created felt to make the hats by taking the fur, rubbing mercury all over it, or even soaking it in the mercury, and then you brush it off and come up with a felt. Um, but the problem is mercury is poisonous, toxic, and it would get into the air that they were breathing, and they didn't have any kind of ventilation. And so they would breathe in mercury, and eventually the mercury would cause them to have neuro problems mm -hmm. and so their brains would just become filled with mercury and they'd start to have all kinds of issues from it and that's how they became known as mad hatters or mad hatters disease or mad as a hatter and they still use mercury in these old well i don't know if they still do this is probably from the 70s <laughs> but I still have mine because this is a thermometer. You stick it under your tongue or you can stick it under your armpit. You could stick it in a baby's bottom, but I didn't ever actually do that because <laughs> I put it under my tongue. But 
But anyway, um, and these work really well. It's just hard to read it. You have to hold it a certain way to see the, um, the line. But now they have these new ones, you know, the electronic. So I don't even know if they still make these, but these have mercury in there. And I have broken them before where you get little balls of mercury rolling around. And it's, you know, not great. And mercury is a naturally occurring chemical. It's in the, you know, ground. But they pull it out and then make this like liquid compound that's super heavy out of it. And then it becomes like you can breathe in the fumes of it. And once it gets into the environment, it takes a long time for it to settle and become part of like bedrock again. So you're kind of releasing it into the environment and it doesn't go away. It like stays around forever. So that's mercury. That's Mad Hatter disease. Um, I kind of read an interesting story about um, Danbury, Connecticut. Actually, that's why I have this book. Let's do that. Hold on, let me close it. Let me put these away for a minute. This is a subject I have long been interested in. But before the internet, <coughs> I had read that the Hatters used lead, <coughs> excuse me, and they would dip, like, their brush in this lead paint and then lick it and then use it on something. I thought that's what I had read. But I didn't see that anywhere. They said it was the mercury from the, the carroting process. Um, but I'm still curious, was it somebody else? <laughs> was it a different profession who would lick the lead? Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> anyway, okay. So let's pull this out. You know, that's one thing. I usually preface these videos for people who are new. <laughs> I'm not an expert. I am. Um, I'm just trying to teach things to myself to keep my brain sharp because my dad has Alzheimer's and I want to, you know, try to not <laughs> do what I can to keep from, uh, keep my brain sharp. Oh, look what this is. This could be interesting. The Gulf War map. Huh. Somebody put these in here. This is a uh, very old Rand McNally World Atlas. I don't know what year. Let's see if it says NCM. It has Roman numerals. If you're curious, I did a video about Roman numerals and how to read them. If you're curious. Okay, so MCM is 19. Now I'm forgetting. I think L is 50, right? And X is 10. So that would be 60. And then I, I is 2. So 1962. <laughs> okay. I actually marked a page. For people who aren't from the United States, which I'm kind of excited. I have had people comment who are from England, Wales. <coughs> Um, Germany, just recently, Ireland, Turkey, um, I'm trying to think what other country, oh, France, that's all I can think of off the top. Okay, so here's Connecticut, well, wait a minute, I want to show you something else. Here's a map of these great United States, and Connecticut is way over here, so it was part of New England. So just so you know, that's where it is when I'm talking about Connecticut. And I just love maps. I think they're like, 
oh yeah, I have a guy from Italy who watches sometimes and helps me with my Italian. <laughs> I don't think I'm getting better though. go so many places. I just want to travel. <laughs> okay, so here's Connecticut on this map. It's going to be kind of hard to show you. Let's see. So I was going to look for the town of, oh, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Danbury. I'm pretty sure it's Danbury, not Danbury. I forgot to put the B. That's the other thing if you're new here. I don't spell perfectly all the time, and that's okay. I don't beat myself up about it. <laughs> yeah, Danbury. Okay, so let's see. We've got London, Norwich, Danielson, Putnam. There's a Putnam in Tennessee. Um, look how little Rhode Island is over here. It's so cute. New Britain, Hartford. I forget. I have some connection to Hartford. I can't think of what it is. Wallingford, New Haven, Bridgeport. Here it is, Danbury. So it's sort of way over here. The fact that it's here doesn't really affect the story. I just thought we could look at it. <laughs> so we'd know where it is. So here's Connecticut. Here's Long Island. And here's Danbury. So Danbury, Connecticut was known for its hats in the late 19th century, which is 18, you know, 80s, 90s in that time period. And they were so known for their hats <laughs> that they were called Hat City. And the Beach Boys wrote a song called Going to Hat City. They didn't. That's a joke. Okay. So they were known as Hat City because they had 56 hat making, you know, I don't know, facilities, whatever you want to call them. I don't know how big they were, but they had 56 and they would produce, um, I think it was 5 million hats per year back in the 1890s. And all of them were using mercury <laughs> to make the rabbit or whatever small animal they were using, beaver, you know, work better for their hats. So they had such an outbreak of Mad Hatter. There were like half their population was walking around slurring their words and they had what they called the Danbury shake where they would just shake and that was from um, <clears throat> the mercury. And like I told you, back in the 1860s, there was an article about the possible effects of mercury on hatters. And then in the 19, I think it was the 1920s, a woman named Alice Hamilton, she was a doctor, and I think she was studying or working at Harvard. She wrote a longer article about the dangers of mercury to hatters. And that was in 1922. And it wasn't until the 1940s that the government said, okay, no more mercury. <laughs> you can't use mercury in hat making. And so they switched over to, I think it was hydrogen peroxide, which was cheaper and safer and worked just as well. But it that's how long they kept using mercury in the production of the hats. So that's kind of messed up. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's kind of interesting. I don't think I have anything else about hatters. We have the Mad Hatter and Alice's Adventures. Alice's, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll in 1865. We have in Danbury, Connecticut. Um, what was called the Danbury 
shakes. By the way, that could be a cool band name, I think, the Danbury Shakes. Hat City is what Danbury was known as in the late 19th century, and it was 1940s. It was finally banned in Connecticut, and I think everywhere, I think, because they were making all the hats, really. And let's see, the Milners, a hat maker is called a Milner. And the process of putting the mercury on the fur was called carroting because it would turn the fur bright orange. Yeah, so the men in France would urinate <laughs> on the hats. And that's kind of where they realized, oh, there's mercury in that guy's urine. We should use mercury. Um, yeah, Matt as a hatter came before the Mad Hatter. Lewis Carroll had heard it as people would talk about Mad Hatters. And that caused unpredictability, hallucination, slurred speech, shakes, loss of teeth, plus a lot of other symptoms that I didn't necessarily write down. Um, and this was all caused from mercury that they used in the hat making. So, let me, let me take a look at, I do have some notes over here. Let me double check if I forgot anything important. Um, Connecticut. I think I remembered it. Camel, I told you about the camel urine, right? <laughs> that was kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So, I hope you guys like that and learned a little something about the Mad Hatter, but I know there was some other condition where they would lick their, either, it was either a paintbrush or a pen, I can't remember, and dip it in, in, uh, lead. I feel like now that I think about it, it was, oh, it was, the, I know what it was. It was watchmakers. It was guys who made watches and they had to use lead and they'd suck the, you know how you like suck on a paintbrush to make the bristles kind of sharp? You know what I mean? Like pointed. I've done it myself. <laughs> it's gross. But anyway, and then they dip it in lead and put it on the watch. Yeah, that's it. It's all coming back to me. See, when you get to be above a certain age, sometimes you think something and it brings up a whole thing like the Mad Hatter. And then you remember the original <laughs> but it was the watchmakers so I'll have to look up look into that